So today I'm doing my teach one for planning EHR implementation. The objective of this assignment is to implement an electronic health record in an organization using the breakdown of tasks, and also to develop a training schedule for employees after configuration is complete. The project will take, I have left it blank because it will depend on how you decide to do it. You have the option of working the task seven days around, so 24 hours, seven days a week, or you can choose to give your employees the weekends off, which would obviously change the duration of your project. So the first step is to download the Gantt software. I have provided a link here for you, and then there is also a link provided on Blackboard. Once you have downloaded the software, you can play around with it and get a feel for how it works, or there's also multiple YouTube videos you can watch, and I also will also be doing a walkthrough for it for you on here as well. So the first thing is to decide what are your high-level tasks. If you've looked at the Blackboard assignment page, it lists four main tasks for the assignment, as well as multiple subtasks. So for here, I've gotten rid of the subtask task, task and just put the high-level tasks. So there is the patient information management, clinical information system, laboratory, and pharmacy. If you see here, some of them say requires configuration of a certain task. So for example, laboratory requires a configuration of number one, which is patient information management. That means that you probably need to start with patient information management, then do laboratory, and then do pharmacy. And the last one has to go is clinical information systems because it requires you to have all three tasks configured before you can start this fourth task. And this will all make a little bit more sense when I walk you through how to use the Gantt software. So what order? Patient information management, laboratory, pharmacy, clinical information system. They are not listed in this order on the Blackboard page, but this is the order they have to go in due to the configuration. So first you have to open the Gantt software, and this is what it will look like when you open it. It will be completely blank. So after you've opened the Gantt software, you can add your first task. Your first task is going to be patient information management. All you have to do to add a new task is click on the button that looks like a clock, which is the button under the view tab in the top left hand corner of the screen. I'll close out my PowerPoint here for a second and pull that up for you. So to add a new task, all you're going to do is click on the clock and it simply pops up right there and you can delete and type in whatever you want. In this case, it's patient information management. If you see the dates here that are wrong, don't worry about that. We'll get to that in just a few minutes, so don't worry about that. Just follow this step by step. So here you've added your first task and added the name. Second, you want to input your information. So we have your name in there and we have a number one. And next you want to add the date. You can simply do this by just clicking where it says begin date where the text is or you can right click in order to pull up a menu. So to add duration and the date of the task, if you guys notice on the Blackboard page, it, for multiple subtasks, it lists the duration of the task. So all you have to do is click on, is right click on it and it'll pull up this menu here. That's this bigger picture here and it will have the name begin date, the end date, and the duration. And from this screen you can add duration by simply clicking on the number of days or you can do it by a different end date. So if I look at the Gantt software here and I double click on the date, I get the big menu that pulls up and I can say the duration of this task is 31 days. And then you can click in this dialog and it will tell you when end date is calculated or if you want to give it a start and end date it will calculate the duration for you. So you just click OK and it has calculated your end date for you. Now you know you only typed in 30 days but this is taking into account weekends and time off. So keep that in mind. We can go back here and I can double click on it again and change this back to 1. 
you don't need to set a task for the primary task that you have to do because it will automatically configure it for you, if that makes sense. So once we come back, remember we said our four main tasks are patient information, laboratory, and pharmacy. I think it's easier to start in this order. You don't have to do it in this order because, as you'll see later, you can set tasks to predecess other tasks. So you can just add a new task and hit two laboratory and then you can click add new task again pharmacy add new task again oh my gosh everybody's clinical information systems So now you have all four of your tasks and you're thinking, well, how do I add the subtask? That's really easy. Just click on the number one again. Click add new task. This can be subtask A. And all you have to do for that is indent it. And that's how you do a subtask. And then for your subtask, if you want, you can also double click that. And go into and add the duration. So if it says configurations 10 days, add 10 days. And then you can set the predecessor as patient information system or laboratory or pharmacy or clinical information system. So this is your first subtask, you don't have to set a configuration. And you can just delete it. But it still has your subtask of taking 10 days to configure. Now, because configuration and training are separate, you can click Add New Task. This will automatically make another subtask, and you can say A1 Subtask Training. And for the training, you don't have to set any predecessors, or you can just set the predecessor as Subtask A. So if that's confusing, you just double click it again, click Predecessor, Add. And you can make sure the training doesn't start until after the configuration is started. And then just click OK. And if you notice up here, it automatically cal calculates end dates and start dates for when the training's done to start this. Now, one thing that might get confusing is that training and configuration don't necessarily have to go together. So you might find it easier to separate these two and not add training in so you can get the correct configuration dates. And then add a second chart with training or add it separately. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. I've covered all of this, adding subtests. As I said, you can go through this, and I showed you simply hit the arrow that indents it. It's really easy. And adding predecessors, you just click the predecessor, and then click Add, and then click on the task name button and put the drop-down menu and pick whatever predecessor you want to add. You can have multiple predecessors. So as you saw in clinical information systems number four, there are some tasks that have subtasks that have multiple things, like it can't start before B, C, and D are configured. You can add all that in. And lastly, you're gonna want to do your introspection to make sure that you found project management if you found it helpful or useful, what are your thoughts on it? So to give you guys an idea of what everything should look like. This is my Gantt software. I'll open my recent projects. This is what my thing will look like. And this is what yours should like look like towards the end. Once you have everything typed in, it automatically calculates it for you. The only thing I might go back and do is take out the training because as you can see, it does throw off my dates a little bit because laboratory can start before my D1 patient information, whatever training ends. And lastly, it asks for your Gantt chart. This is your Gantt chart right here. And you can just click to export this as a PDF and add it into your PowerPoint. Or you can just do it as an attachment, whatever makes it easiest for you. And if you guys want to see the rest of it, this is how I organized it first. You don't have to do it this way. It's probably easier if you use the software. But in my head, I went through and did the order of completion for all the subtasks.
before I realized that you could actually use that the Gantt software could all be programmed for this. So obviously the Gantt software does save a lot of time on this. It makes it a lot easier. And then once everything's done, you'll know what your completion date is. So if you look here, the end date for mine is February 17th, 2017. So that's probably, that's starting March 31st, which is when I started practicing this all, which would mean that it would take almost a year to complete this. And like I said, you can add it to work year round or you can take weekends off. It's whatever you want to do when you set the task as the project manager. Project manager. And just make sure to look at your the assignment here to make sure you have everything on here that you want. And if you need any extra links, you can just click on the page that we have for the class and it has anything extra that you might want to look at to walk you through specifically how to do something. And Google, obviously, is always a great thing.